glory to Jesus Christ. What a beautiful, warm day it is here in Overland Park, Kansas. We just went through historic cold, and there's no better place to be than outside right now uh, in God's beautiful creation. Uh, in wisdom, he has made them all, and it's incredibly beautiful out right now. Uh, behind me is our newly expanded community garden, getting ready for the spring to be planted. And of course, with the spring comes the Lenten season. Uh, and this video will serve as an introduction to uh, the video series that I'll be doing during the course of the pre-Lenten cycle and all of Great Lent, uh, which I'm entitling The Joy of the Fast. Uh, if we think about springtime, it brings us great hope. Uh, things are bare right now. The trees are bare themselves, uh, but life is coming uh, and things are going to get green and come again. And this is a time of renewal. Uh, so this is the time of the fast. Uh, and too often uh, we look at the fast as a time of dread. Uh, and all the texts uh, of, of the Triodian itself uh, are pointing to that there is joy in what we're headed towards, and that is new life in Christ, uh, which again connects with the theme of springtime itself. Uh, so these videos will be done uh, each day that there are texts from the Lenten Triodian, uh, and what I'll do is I'll reflect on a few of the texts of each day uh, that, that talk about the theme of being joyful and the joy of the fast itself. Uh, and also, I'll use as another text uh, the, uh, uh, the prologue of Okrid uh, by St. Nikolai Velimirovich, uh, St. Nikolai of Zicha, uh, who has homilies in those, those daily texts. Uh, and so the, the, I'll have reflection on the text from the Triodian and then also uh, from St. Nikolai's uh, sermon. So that'll be the content of uh, the videos that will come out or once we get into uh, right before uh, Meat Fair Sunday, uh, they will be daily. Uh, leading up uh, now uh, with the pre-Lenten cycle, they'll just be on Sundays. Uh, so the, the next video will be on Sunday about the uh, parable of the publican and the Pharisee. Uh, so that's what will be happening uh, during the fast. Uh, and I want to read to you uh, from the Lenten Triodian. Uh, if you don't have the book, I highly encourage you to get it. Uh, uh, if nothing more than to be able to read the articles in the introduction to the book uh, by Bishop Callistus. Uh, and I, I want to read his words about the true nature of fasting. Uh, and this is in the introduction to the Triodian uh, to really set the table for these videos. Uh, no pun intended uh, about fasting there. So he writes, uh, the primary aim of fasting is to make us conscious of our dependence on God. If practiced seriously, the Lenten abstinence from food, particularly in the opening days, involves a considerable measure of real hunger and also a feeling of tiredness and physical exhaustion. The purpose of this is to lead us in turn to a sense of inward brokenness and contrition, to bring us, that is, to the point where we appreciate the full force of Christ's statement, without me you can do nothing, from John 15. If we always take our fill of food and drink, we easily grow overconfident in our own abilities, acquiring a false sense of autonomy and self-sufficiency. The observance of a physical fast undermines this sinful complacency, stripping from us the specious assurance of the Pharisee who fasted, it is true, but not in the right spirit. The Lenten abstinence gives us the saving self-dissatisfaction of the publican. Such is the function of the hunger and the tiredness to make us poor in spirit, aware of our helplessness and of our dependence on God's aid. Yet, it would be misleading to speak only of this element of weariness and hunger. Abstinence leads not merely to this, but also to a sense of lightness, wakefulness, freedom, and joy. Even if the fast proves debilitating at first, afterwards we find that it enables us to sleep less, to think more clearly, and to work more decisively. As many doctors acknowledge, periodical fasts contribute to bodily hygiene. While involving genuine self-denial, fasting does not seek to do violence to our body, but rather to restore it to health and equilibrium. 
Most of us in the Western world habitually eat more than we need. Fasting liberates our body from the burden of excessive weight and makes it a willing partner in the task of prayer, alert and responsive to the voice of the Spirit. Uh, so this really puts in context what we're doing to ultimately get to the joy of knowing that, well, first of all, that we need help in life, that God is there to help us. This is our joy. This is our help. Uh, and everything that we do is leading to Christ's joyous third day of resurrection. Uh, so again, these videos will be done almost daily. Uh, the next one coming out on Sunday, and I pray that they will be profitable. Uh, and I'll turn around here so you can be able to see uh, our beautiful church uh, in the snow uh, and in again this balmy weather <laughs> that we're experiencing now. Uh, glory to Jesus Christ and have a blessed, wonderful beginning, a joyous beginning to the pre-Lenten cycle and then nothing but joy throughout the fast.